So, good afternoon. Um, what I want to talk about at this moment is our model XW130 Takamatsu model. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit first on the machine itself, inside the machine. Uh, it's a twin spindle and twin turret machine. Uh, as you can see, 8 inch chuck size, A26 spindles, a full 15 horsepower. Uh, turrets are over here, they're, they're kind of BMT or bolt on, bolt on tooling type turrets. Got one on the left and one on the right here. And this, which I'll explain a little bit further on, is our middle station turn device. Um, and I'll explain a little bit that when we get into, into the motion. This basically turns the part over so that we can take the part and put it into this chuck uh, on the right hand side for the back side or the OP20 operation. So as we pull back out, uh, just a little bit describe on the machine. This is the Fanuc control. Um, and this is the uh, Takamatsu loader teach pendant here. Very, very simple uh, teach mechanism. And you can see it's got a cable on it. So it's very easy to, to, to move into the area where you're doing your setup. You can jog the loader over and then just hit simple teach points. Very, very simple to use. I will mention that this is actually the same loader teach and loader pendant for all the Takamatsu machines. So if you get different models, um, and your operators learn to use this particular teach pendant, then it's common within the, all the Takamatsu machines that they can run any machine, basically. So what I'd like to do now is just kind of explain a little bit about the over, overall of the machine. I always bring the machines in with an extended gantry rail, so I'll just briefly show you that over here. We'll get into the stalker as we go over, but at this moment we've got the stalker, the, the 16 station stalker on the left-hand side. I could actually move it and put it on the right hand side if I wanted to, so I could have kind of a left to right part flow or even a right to left part flow. So you can see we've got the extended gantry rail over here for the, for the rotary stalker. And then what we do is I bring the uh, machines in again with the extended gantry rail on the right hand side. Now this is actually very, very, very good because not only can I put a rotary stalker on this side, I could put an out conveyor for finished parts. If we wanted to add auto gauging later, we could do that. If you wanted to transfer over to say another machine, we could do that also. So it just provides tremendous flexibility um, for whatever we, whatever we really want to do. So I want to kind of slowly run, move around. So if you come with me, I want to move around to the back side of the machine a little bit. I'm going to move around to the back side. So you can see in here a little bit, uh, I just want to show you this machine is box on box way and Takamats always hand scrapes and diamond laps all other box ways. So very, very rigid, uh, very wide saddle box way. So you come around a little bit to the back side more, a little bit better idea. And you can see all Fanuc, all Fanuc drives and uh, spindle motors, all Fanuc. And you can see again the wide saddle on those box ways. Again, it's a very, very rigid machine. So as we move a little bit back, I really am excited. I'm really excited about, about this particular feature here that Takamats has. We actually have a bed cooling system that actually circulates uh, coolant uh, throughout the bed, right below where the uh, spindles are. And this is the pump and this is the uh, radiator that actually circulates that, uh, that coolant and keeps basically a, a very constant temperature, about a 72 to 74 degrees uh, of the bed, which really helps to control any uh, thermal growth. It's really fantastic. So let's move around here very quickly. I just wanna show you the rotary stalker. Um, I bring it in basically with a 16 station stalker. The reason for that is because it does not impact the floor space. Uh, you can't see the chip conveyor over there, but basically uh, this does not go past where the chip conveyor would, would extend. So you basically get the maximum amount of, of rotary uh, stalker stations uh, without impacting floor space. So that's why we bring it in as a 16. We can get you know smaller ones or larger ones as well, but that's kind of how I stock them. Um, 150 millimeter part diameter on this particular machine. Uh, and part length is depending on you know the type of work holding that we're using. So we'll get into the stalker a little bit more. So you can basically load load the parts into this area. And the way it works is uh, the gantry actually will continue to load and load parts while we, we have access to these particular stalker positions. So I'll close these doors and move around to the front. 
So what we're going to do now, I'm going to ask Sage if he would step through the process. I want to basically step through the loading sequence and kind of explain that in a little bit of detail for you. So Sage is going to go ahead and kind of step through the process and I'll describe it as he's moving the, moving the loader. So you can see over here, basically the hydraulic lifter is picking up the parts. Now we can take blank parts from the stalker and put finished parts back into the stalker. You may notice we have two lifters. Uh, we have an up and down lifter for basically blank parts and finished parts. So it enables us if we want to put the parts, finished parts back into the stalker, we can. So this is the loader. So we'll stop it there for just a moment. I want to explain. Uh, this particular machine has three jaws. Uh, both in the load hand and the unload hand. So this is the unloader hand here that takes off the finished parts And this up here is the loader hand. I don't know how well you can see around here This is the loader hand here that's got the blank part and with all Takamatsu machines We use this part pusher that uh, pushes the part in against the work stop and There's a sensor on here that if it doesn't push the part far enough or it pushes it too far uh, we'll get an error and it'll stop the machine and basically protects you against any kind of misloading that might happen So we'll continue on with the loading process now So it's basically come down. This is the first part here So this is actually just going to go and load a blank uh, We'll get into the unloading in just a moment, but when you're doing the first sequence We're actually loading so you heard that it actually pushed the part in against the work stop. So we're going to come back out now So now the shutter's closing, we're actually going to be doing uh, first operation cutting as the loader is going over and picking up uh, another blank part. So when this process is finished, you'll see now that we're going to stop the, stop the spindle and we'll actually come down and we'll do an unload process first. So shutter open, very fast shutter by the way, very fast shutter with back pressure. So we're going to come down and see now we're doing the unloading process. So we're going to grab the part, chuck opens up, and now we're coming straight down and we're going to load a new blank. So now we've already turned the part in OP10. So now we're going to go over to the middle station turn device. So we're going to go over there. I want to show you, stop there for just a moment if we can. I, I want you to notice, and this is a Takamatsu uh, patent on this particular feature. We actually do a uh, pick up and a drop off at the same time. So you'll notice that the load hand and the unload hand are actually in line with the turn device grippers on both hands. So we'll actually drop off a finished up 10 part and we'll pick up a turn part. Can't do that at the moment because we're not that far along in the process. But let's continue without move that forward and you'll see what we're doing there. So we've dropped off the part, the finished off 10 part now. You see now what we're doing is we're, we're flipping the part, a very ingenious mechanism that Takamatsu has for actually turning the part to the other side. So we're gonna come back over. Now we're going to, um, we're going to grab or unload a finished off 10 part. We're gonna load another blank. Again, this is in the first sequence of the operations. We're going to come back over. Now you can see it where we're going to come over and we're going to be actually uh, load a finished off 10. We're going to pick up a turn part at the same time. This, this really is fantastic. It goes to system cycle time, which nobody else actually has this. So it's, it's an amazing, amazing feature that Takamatsu has. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to actually load the turn part, the part that we already did in off 10 and we flip the part over. So now we're actually going to load the the turn part into the second chuck which would be the op 20 operation so now you can see the gantry is coming over and uh it's going to basically pick up uh pick up another blank part again as i mentioned we can actually um we can actually pick up blanks and drop finished parts off to the stalker or we can take the parts to the other side of the machine and drop them over on the right hand side of the machine as well so we have a we have that option available so this is the basic loading process on the machine uh let me show you just a, a couple of other things quickly before 
we actually go ahead and uh, start the full full speed automation so you get a look for that. So as I mentioned before with all Takamatsu machines, we have actually coolant and air blow supplied as standard uh, with the machines. Again, chip management is just critical with any automation machines. And typically I'll bring the machines in with the high pressure pumps, those turquoise pumps that we talked about, um, and either spindle through coolant or air seating. I'll either bring the machines in one way or the other. So with that, I'm gonna have uh, Sage go ahead and put this over to full automation mode. And uh, we'll, so you'll get a feel of the, the, the full, um, actual way the machine is working in, in, in full auto mode. So again, unloading, loading a blank part. Now going again over to the middle station turn device. So with this machine, we can do up 1010, uh, same, same operation on both spindles, or 1020 and use the middle station turn device. So we can, we can do it either way, either way, whatever you need. 